Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about the Kinky Studios EXM1 integrated amplifier. An amazing, uh, really astonishing piece for the price. Comes in at 2,400 or so US dollars. This piece is said to have a Swiss sound, the Swiss sound character. And the Swiss sound character comes from brands such as Nagra, Goldman, etc. Except those pieces are priced into the stratosphere. Can the Kinky EXM1 at $2,400 actually compete with something from Switzerland? Uh, I wanted to find out, so I managed to get in here a Nagra Classic preamp and Classic amp. I think new retail, they come in at around $36,000, $37,000. So stay tuned as I talk about the Kinky EXM1 integrated amplifier and even share my thoughts of how it did side by side against the Nagra. So the Kinky Studios EXM1 integrated amp has been getting rave reviews for actually two or three years now, maybe even more. The piece I'm talking about is the latest version, came out in 2021. It has the visible gold heat sinks on top. That's how you can recognize it from the older version. Has the new volume control, goes from zero to 100. And for $2,400, this 60 pound amplifier sure looks the part. So the review unit was black. I liked it so much, I purchased one in silver. When the silver came in, I think the silver is just stunning. Uh, it has that expensive look to it. It has that massive uh, build quality. Again, 60 pounds, uh, this amplifier, and it uses quality parts inside. While this may be made in China, it does not use cheap parts inside. This is a very, very high-end and powerful integrated amplifier for not so much money. You know, I've I've had some great products come in from China that sounded amazing. I have brands that I love and adore that are made in China, Line Magnetic being one of them. The Prima Luna stuff is made in China. China can make some really amazing gear. And if you buy direct from China, you do gather up a lot of that savings. The EXM1 is a 215 watt per channel into eight ohms amplifier integrated. 400 watts into four ohms. The first few watts are in class A. Now, everything about this amplifier screams quality, from its design to its large, silky smooth selector knobs and volume knobs, to the big display that's so easy to read, to the all metal remote control, to again, that heft of build quality, all metal construction, it is a sight to behold, and I couldn't believe that it was $2,400. When it came into review, I replaced the past lab separates I've been running, which are the XA 60.8s and the XP 12 preamp. When I put in the Kinky Studios, the sound difference was pretty massive compared to the past labs, where the past labs was more of an easygoing class A full-bodied, warm-leaning, ethereal listen. The Kinky Studios was a take-no-prisoner, get you out of your seat, your hair's raising up on then kind of amplifier. When you hook this amplifier up, you can feel and hear and tell that it has immense power within it. This is not a Class D amplifier. This is a Class AB amplifier, and therefore, it sounds like a Class AB amplifier. From what I've read and in various reviews about the Kinky, it was designed to kind of be like a Swiss amplifier, those Summit Fi endgame type of pieces that cost as much as a new car. Uh, how could this be for $2,400? That's what I said. That's why I wanted to review it. But as I listened to the EXM1 and as it started to open up after just a few hours of listening to it, I was pretty amazed. Um, it had impact, it had dynamic kick, it was three dimensional, uh, it was the sound stage was very wide, um, a little bit deep, not so tall, 
but the imaging was spectacular. Of course, I'm running it with a Core Dave DAC um, and my Fleetwood DeVille speakers, which I adore. They will be buried with me. These things are amazing. Um, the Kinky really brought these speakers to life like I haven't heard them before. With the past labs, it's a little bit of a softer presentation, those Class A amps. It doesn't have the grunt and the kick, say for example, like the Pass Labs Class A B amps. Um, but the Kinky was really, really giving me tons of audiophile quality high-end sound, and it was stable, it was dead silent. Um, the remote worked perfect. Uh, the volume steps were amazing. Uh, I could turn it up to 15 for super late night listening and hear a nice full bodied sound. If I want to pump it up midday, I'll turn it up to 48 and I can just rock the room down. The bass performance is special with the Kinky. The damping factor. The damping factor is 2000 on the Kinky Studios piece. The damping factor tells you how well that amplifier is going to control your drivers, particularly the bass driver, right? If you have a higher damping factor, it is said you will have cleaner bass, tighter bass, more subsonic depth charge bass. If you have a lower damping factor, people say that the bass can get loose and sloppy. Now, the Pass Labs amplifiers have a damping factor of only 150. The Kinky is 2000, and yes, I can notice the difference. While I love the bass of the Pass Labs, it's plentiful, it's full, it's organic. The Kinky goes the other route and has a fast as lightning, quick, really deep, hard hitting, controlled bass. If you like neutral or accuracy, the Kinky Studios EXM1 is a fantastic integrated. Um, I had zero complaints on the build, zero complaints on the design. I've had integrated amplifiers up to $26,000 through here. And I can say the Kinky hangs with the big boys in the $10,000 range, around 10, 11, $12,000 range. It gives up nothing to those in sound quality or really even build quality. The speaker binding posts could be better. Uh, there are usually better binding posts on the $10,000 and up integrateds, but sound wise, this was delivering a fast, punchy, um, detailed uh, presentation with a big sound stage and really good imaging. Now, it's not as holographic as the Pass Labs pieces either. While you have some of that 3D with the Kinky, it's not a walk inside 3D soundstage. Believe it or not, with some pieces, you can actually get up from your seat and walk into the soundstage and hear you know, a violin here, uh, a, a, a guitar here, a drum over there. It's pretty remarkable what you can do when you have really, um, when you have pieces that do this well. The Kinky does everything really good, um, but nothing sticks out. The treble has a nice, extended, um, exciting, yet golden hue to it. It's not warm, it's not bright, it's neutral. The mid-range of the Kinky is sweet, seductive, um, a little crisp and a little recessed compared to something like the Pass Labs or even the Nagra, for example. But it just sounds really pristine and clean. The bass, as I said, is tight as can be. It's thunderous when called upon. It's very clean and very fast. Now, with some speakers, the Kinky Amp might sound a little forward. Running it with the DeVilles, which lean a little bit warm, it is an amazing presentation. It gives these speakers dynamics and kick and punch and that three-dimensionality that I know they can do, and they do it with the Kinky. Uh, with something like Clips Heresy 4s or Forte 4s, it can be a little bit edgy on the top end. This is not an amp I would pair with Clips Heritage, for example, but if you have speakers that lean a little bit to the warm side, uh, or even are, are pretty neutral, the Kinky Amp is actually rather amazing. If you want those dynamics from dark to light, from soft to hard or loud, you know, quiet to loud, 
The Kinky does that even better than those Pass Labs 60.8 monoblocks. Now, I was curious because I read a review or two comparing the Kinky Studios to some pretty pricey Swiss pieces. So I managed to get uh, a Nagra Classic preamp, which has tubes in it, and a Nagra Classic amp, which is solid state, class AB, first 10 watts, and class A. I wanted to see how the Kinky actually did against the Nagra, which is approaching 36, 37, $38,000 retail. So I wanted to see how this would go. And the results kind of shocked me because I would say the Kinky EXM1 is 80, 85% of that Nagra setup in sound quality, I'm talking sound. Now the design of the Nagra in my eyes is beautiful. I've always loved the looks of Nagra gear. It's just always been out of my reach financially. But hearing it in my space was mind blowing. It was, I would describe the sound of the Nagra as heavenly, seductive, sweet, expansive, extremely holographic. It has a massive walk-in soundstage. But the kicker is the Kinky EXM1 has the same sound signature as the Nagra set. Clean, detailed, um, pristine, airy, right? But the Nagra does this quite a bit better than the Kinky. Even so, look at the price difference. The Kinky's $2,400. The Nagra set is into the stratosphere, the price of a pretty nice new car these days, if you can find a car, that is. Um, so when I was listening to the Nagra set, knowing this is about as good as it will ever get for me in this room, this is some pretty pricey stuff. Um, it was just, as I said, heavenly, um, almost like the, you know, the sky parted and a big beam of light came down and powered that Nagra set. It was so musical, but detailed and airy and three dimensional. Everything I've ever wanted. Uh, better bass uh, than even the Kinky. I don't know the damping factor of the Nagra, but it went deeper. Uh, it was just as tight. Uh, the bass performance of the Nagra was really special. The mid-range was a little more silky sweet because of those tubes in the preamp. But I can't understate just how close the Kinky EXM1 got to that sound of the Nagra. No, it wasn't as magical, but would you expect it to be for that price difference? $2,400 for the Kinky, $38,000, $37,000 for the Nagra. That's a big difference. And to be able to get a flavor of that $38,000 stack a pretty good dose of that flavor, 80, 85% is absolutely remarkable. The Nagra set to me is like true end game, something you're buried with when you buy a Nagra set like I, you see here, and this isn't even the high end Nagra. Um, it's something that you will never want to get rid of if you own it, you'd wanna be buried with it. It's that good. It, I was listening to the Nagra thinking there is nowhere else I'd wanna go up from here but also who has $40,000 to spend on a preamp and amp. I know many of you do, but so many of us do not. In that case, the Kinky EXM1 gets very close and it's, you know, a lot of you aren't going to believe that because you hear Nagra in $38,000 and you think there's no way that a China made integrated can get close to it, but it does have a lot of the same signature of sound. I would actually say the Kinky is more dynamic and has a little more punch than even the Nagra, but the Nagra is sweeter um, and more seductive and draws you in more. It, it connects more emotionally, but the Kinky connects with your whole body because it makes you want to get up and move. You can also change the op amps inside this device. You can buy some from Burson, for example, discrete op amps. It's almost like changing tubes. They pull out and snap in and it changes the character of the sound a little bit. Some will bring more detail. Some might bring more warmth. So that is something you can do. I didn't do that because I just wanted to listen to the amp that you guys would get if you bought it. I didn't want to make any enhancements to it or even worsen the sound. I will say the Kinky amp does take some burn in. That's real. 
when I got the silver one in after I ordered it, it sounded different. It didn't come into its own and sound like the black one till about 30 hours of use. And it just seems to open up more and more up to about 100 hours, which is what they say in the manual. Um, so the Kinky does need some time to go through some burn in and it, it will fully open up. The Kinky Studios EXM1 is an astounding amp for the money if you like power, drive, dynamics, kick, um, that energy to your music without it really crossing into that bright territory uh, or that hard territory. I hate hard sounding amplifiers. The Kinky is not that as long as you made it with neutral to warm leaning speakers. You can buy the EXM1 direct from Kinky Studios. You do have to buy it direct from China. That's the con of this piece. But that's also why you're not paying $8,000 for it. You're paying $2,400 for it. I'll put a link in the description below to the Kinky Studios website. As always, I have zero affiliation with Kinky Studios or any audio brand. Um, this is my honest evaluation of the piece. It's a grand slam home run, depending on what you made it with. Again, that's very important. Synergy is key, as I've talked about before. Hook this up to a nice set of warm leaning speakers or neutral speakers, and you're gonna have one heck of an amplifier. I'll have more videos soon. I love you all, and I will see you next time. Bye. Big thumbs up to the Kinky Studios EX-M1.